any rate, uh, so basically kind of, I guess one of the, the first questions might be what and why do we actually choose our case study area being Tasman and Golden Bays? Well, once upon a time, actually not all that long ago, uh, it was noticed that the, the scallop biomass and catches in Tasman and Golden Bay were going down over time. So I had a very nice plot of 2000 through to 2018 that showed this happening in Golden Bay and Tasman Bay, but not happening in Marlborough Sound, but also happening in the overall scallop area seven. Um, place. So as a result of that, what was this, there were kind of um, workshops that looked at what people's aims and aspirations were for the area. There were, is it up? No? Okay. Uh, there were reviews done. Um, it was determined that the Atlantis ecosystem model would be developed so that we could actually have a look at what the potential drivers were. And um, <laughs> this is very disconcerting actually, but the good thing about it is that I don't have a little thing going round and round and round telling me how many minutes I've used, so that's cool. So um, as a result of that, basically what was happening, there was already something going on in the area. There was a problem, there, was, there were workshops, um, there was this model that was being built. And we also, when Sustainable Seas actually came along and started, we also knew that there were some really strong community groups there. Um, there was the, um, the Nelson Biodiversity Forum, for example, and the Waimea Inlet Forum. And there was also a um, the lot of industries, a lot of businesses in, in the marine space there. So we've got tourism, we've got ports, we've got fishing industries, but also a lot of land-based activities that might also um, impact on the system. So it seemed like a really good idea to go into, but what we learnt was that, that things aren't that simple ever. And if you have an engagement break, in a, in a social process, it becomes really hard to get things spun up again. And we had kind of like a year to two to three years kind of break in between the last of the, the workshops about the scallops and what we were going to try and do. And also, if you're going to try and bring new people into a, a process like that, that's actually also really tricky if they haven't been around to actually discuss the, the, um, the aims and the aspirations. Um, so moving forwards, what we do have is projects working in the case study area, doing various different things. Um, I know, actually, this is this is now annoying because I was actually going to show you some of the results of that, but never mind. Um, so, so one of them, for example, is the the tipping points project, which you'll hear about later on. It's a national experiment, and as a hoo hoo, radio, let's speak <laughs> through them. Okay, there's the scallop uh, biomass data with decreasing over time. Um, okay, that was happening, that was happening. Okay, engagement break, hard to bring in new people. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Damn, you want to try pressing it? It really doesn't. Sorry. It really does. Really doesn't want me to show that. Show that that figure. At any rate, um, so there were two um, estuaries that were actually um, sampled as part of that study in the, in the Golden Tasman Bays. Well, actually in Tasman Bay, um, Delaware Bay, and Waimea Inlet. But having all this information from the all the other 19 estuaries as well allows us to actually look at how those case studies. Are positioned in the kind of the environmental context of the rest of New Zealand. So I did have a plot showing how, in terms of sediment characteristics, these two fitted in. And oh, there it is there. So the the, the two um, Delaware and Waimea are the big or the yellow blobs, and the um, the other ones are North Island and South Island estuaries. So that's just one of the things that we can get out of a lot of these other um, studies that are going on. OK, um, we've also developed a series of models that can be used to run management scenarios, and they'll be being displayed at the, um, the, the, in the afternoon session. Um, we're starting to run a pilot of using system mapping for EBM. So systems mapping is, is a way of actually creating a whole lot of linkages between different systems components. So they can be any sort of components. They can be cultural. Uh, social, uh, economic investment signals, ecological health, 
and you can put them together, you bring, you combine them in a room of stakeholders um, and interested parties, you determine the linkages between them, and then you can look and you can see how effects on one part of the component can flow through to other parts of the component. So that, that's spinning up and hopefully going to start um, next week. Uh, we're also developing C-Sketch for the area. Now, C-Sketch is another way that we can actually display uh, lots of different types of knowledge and put them together. So it's uh, good for mapping and display. You can use it for reporting, for education, for data collection. It's also really good for um, allowing public inquiry into to things that are going on, trying to find out information, and also to place their own values and what they'd like to see happening on the system. It's great too in that you can actually put on layers that are for your purposes only. Not everybody has to see all layers. And it's really great for marine spatial planning. So really, um, this project is about bringing together all that other sort of stuff that's going on here uh, knowledge, models, processes, tools, and looking at what works for people trying to use them and what doesn't. And that's the end.